leave it there. But yeah, so Raspberry Pi is zero. Um, you know, as some of you may know, it's just a, a really low cost. It's supposed to be five dollars, but once you add the cost of an SD card, which is required, it's gonna be around like ten, fifteen dollars. Um, I did this project primarily because like my car captures uh, video feed, right? And I really wanted it to like save to a device that is smarter than like say a USB thumb drive. Um, one of the problems of USB thumb drive, no matter how big of thumb drive you put it in, it's going to be filled up. You have to empty it yourself. Um, so some of you may have heard that may have heard of a device, an SD card where it has Wi-Fi, right? But I think they stopped producing it quite a long time ago. It used to be called iFi. You know, when you put it into your like, DSLR, you have your uh, mobile hotspot. You keep shooting photos, and you just get like uh, raw. Your raws are going in your Dropbox. But they stopped selling those kind of stuff anymore. And you can't really. The same problem is that you can't really program it. It's kind of like a fixed fifty dollar SD card. Yeah, that's limited purpose. So I went about like trying to make something better. Um, and guys, this is my fifth hardware talk. Yeah. yeah, and I'm really glad to be here. It's good to see that SOC has improved. In other ways, I, mean, I hope the Wi-Fi improved, but like no, you know, like the various facilities improved. Like back in my days, there was no like this kind of place where you can build stuff. I actually have to bring my own tools. Uh, and in, in a research lab, yeah, or back borrow some tools from engineering department, yeah. Okay, so straight to the problem, right? I have like a dash cam in the in the car. It records um, videos based on events. Uh, you know, for example, like heart acceleration, deceleration. Um, you would plug a USB thumb drive into it, but it would just get filled up, right? On day one, it's like yeah, it works fine. But you know, after like 10 days, the thumb drive is full, I have to plug it out, empty it out, or like manually delete stuff from it. Right? I mean, it is kind of a new feature, it's not, it doesn't work very well, but we try to uh, improve our problem. So what I thought was that, okay, like I could make a fake thumb drive, um, you know, you could use an, you've probably seen schematics out there which suggest that you can use an Arduino, attach it to an SD card, and you can somehow make some form of like a, a fake thumb drive out of an Arduino. But, um, over here, we are looking at primarily a Raspberry Pi Zero because a Raspberry Pi Zero compared to the other Raspberry Pis is that it is the only model which has OTG. Does anyone know what is a USB OTG? Or does anyone not know what is a USB OTG? Yeah, so USB OTG is basically host mode, no, client mode, right? Where a port, okay, like attached to a microcontroller can be, can emulate a a slave device. For example, you could pretend that your Raspberry Pi is a keyboard, right? And you plug in a computer and it can pretend it pretends a keyboard, it sends commands. It can pretend to be uh, a thumb drive and it can expose itself as a thumb drive to a computer. Um, so what I plan to do over here is that you know to have a Raspberry Pi Zero to pretend to be a thumb drive. And as videos are loaded into it, I could simply delete the oldest ones, right? I mean, the simple thing you can just a round robin system where you know, oh, you are like near ninety percent, delete the old oldest files by, yeah, by timestamp. Um, that's supposed to be the simple solution, you see. But the problem is that internet is so smart. Right? The whole world has like many smart people, and someone beat me to it, uh, and I found it on Reddit, right? It's that. Um, someone basically built a smart USB drive for your dash cam um, and he basically put up a whole bunch of source code okay so yeah whatever right? I'm not going to like do it myself I'm just going to like go and uh, get his git repo and basically like flash my stuff with it uh, so what the improvement of what, of what he did over here is that he instead of just simply you know like deleting old videos um, he basically suggested to use the Wi-Fi so that when you are home, you would connect to your home Wi-Fi and upload the videos to, let's say, your own server, your Dropbox, whatever. Right? It need not be your home Wi-Fi. It could just be. It could also be tethering. Um, but over here, it's just you know, you're talking about home Wi-Fi because usually you park your car at home, it's within the range of Wi-Fi, and you would upload from there. Um, and yeah, I, I guess this works as well. Um, no one actually made this like mainstream. Everyone who wants this has to like build that device themselves. Yeah, um, so in general, the, when you break down the flowchart of what's going on, it's really simple. Um, if you guys, when you guys look at the repository, it's really a bunch of bash scripts. It's just .sh files all over the place. Yeah, but it works, it's fine. And if anyone uh, recalls the 
I5, uh, I, I can't remember, uh, Bunny Huang made, uh, uh, just like try a bit, Bunny Huang made, uh, how would I say, he reverse engineered some of those SD card firmware, and they are basically running bash script in the SD card or smart SD card firmware. So I think that's fine, right? So over here, what the bunch of script, what it does is that it would try to connect to your Wi-Fi access point. If it cannot find, it just loops, right? If it finds Wi-Fi access point, it connects to it, it checks, can it connect to your choice of archive server? Can it connect to your Dropbox or uh, CIFS share, Samba share? If it cannot connect to it, it goes back looking for Wi-Fi. If it can connect to it, then what it does is that first it unmounts your virtual, uh, how would I say, your virtual thumb drive, you have to disconnect first. It mounts it as a read locally to the operating system. It moves the video files to your choice of archive and then it unmounts it and mounts it back as a virtual thumb drive. Um, the, this this kind of a bit weird because um, when you when that in, in Linux when you mount uh, this a volume right as a fake thumb drive you it is kind of like dedicated to the OTG it cannot be read and write from other processes in the system it's just a limitation yeah um, you know and once it is mounted back as thumb drive it will just like it will check whether you have disconnected is is no longer within range of your Wi-Fi because it. When you leave your Wi-Fi range, it's kind of like, oh, you're like driven off. Yeah. And so this just runs in a loop. Okay. Um, so basically, I just get a Raspberry Pi 0W. Uh, so, so there's one time I was complaining on Facebook. It was like, yeah, I tried to do this, but I realized my old Raspberry Pi has no Wi-Fi on it. So it's kind of pointless. This is the problem when you buy first, first version devices. You know, like, you buy first version device, you think it's very really useful. Like, everyone who thinks of trying to buy a Raspberry Pi 4, um, maybe wait for the, I don't know, 4 plus, I don't know, <laughs> yeah, uh, I just got a case for it, so this is like a cable, right, where you would plug one end, you know, into the, 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 the data port of your Raspberry Pi Zero, the other end goes into your dash cam system, you put in a SD card, um, yeah, there's a heat sink on it, it's usually preferable. The, the Raspberry Pi Zero only has like a single core, so you can't really do too much with it. But also, on the other hand, it also uses a lot less power. Uh, I think some friends have tried to run it off like 200 milliamps or so of power source. Yeah, so any weak, um, like even if your power source is weak, you could possibly run the Pi Zero. Yeah. And I think the Pi 4 draws like 20 watts, right? Or 10. Wow. 10, 10 watts, yeah, about 10 watts. They were, they were stating some like higher requirements on it. Yeah, so you plug it in the car, it detects, so that's great, right? And, um, you know, when you drive around and when I drive home, after a while, it starts appearing on my file server. So, yeah, it, I'm glad it worked out of the box. Um, yeah, so I think some of the learning points after you go through the code is uh, for people who are not familiar with using Linux in an embedded uh, use case, you know, where very often, like, you would power, you'll kill the power, right? And maybe like files on your SD card is corrupted. Like many of you use Raspberry Pis for systems and you'll often find that you have data corruption, you have to run FSCK so often. So it basically shows uh, some examples of how to mount your boot partition as read-only. Um, to avoid corruption, you also disable swap. I mean, who needs swap, right? You have 512 kinds of RAM. Um, and yeah, you know, and, and basically, there are some, and you use a K mod where it mounts your USB OTG as a like a mass storage device. By default, if anyone has tried the Pi Zero, when you plug it into your desktop or a laptop, right, it actually um, mounts as a Ethernet, an Ethernet port. Yeah. Um, I think I have a yeah in future work um, for potentially it still has like spare capacity. You could run a Spotify, Spotify music player. Um, I think there's some script online that helps you like synchronize music files with Spotify. Um, Pi Zero W has a connector, a camera connector board, so you could potentially connect a camera to it, you know, and run some image processing. For example, if a driver is falling asleep, uh, yeah, you could beep. Yeah, I tend to fall asleep sometimes. Um, the repo is over here. Um, just a quick demo. I can show the Pi Zero working as a uh, drive. It just have to get it. That's why you pull it to the drive. You have to do it You can fall asleep. It goes straight. It's very, very good. That's the only thing. You can fall asleep. 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 
Singapore. Yeah, so so like uh, if anyone has not seen a Pi Zero, it's really small. Um, it still has a full 40 pins of GPIO over here, SPI, I squared, two I squared C's, and, and all the other stuff on it. That's it with USB port. Yeah. Behind, behind. Oh yeah, just plug on mouse then. Upload the project. Yeah, so, so potentially some of you may think, you know, yes, this is like a rather smart device, right? So it could have uh, like information expel purposes, so you can just plug it in. It could enumerate a keyboard and mouse. You can run commands, you can enumerate uh, Ethernet, right? You could you know, just do local local host transfer of data. So yeah, it could potentially do a lot of things. So in plugging into the USB um, port, then I uh, hopefully Windows this Windows one. Seven, seven, seven. Okay. It, it should work. I didn't yeah, so the sound. It, it takes a while because first the Pi has to boot up. Oh, yeah. It has to boot up, it has to get into Linux, it has to I don't know, run all your scripts okay. and then finally it pretends to be a thumb drive. Yeah. Uh, one, one question. Yeah. If this is connecting in your car, is it in your car? So you mean that your your Wi Fi your Wi Fi at home can actually reach all the way down to the parking? Yeah, yeah, I mean you have to be within range. Okay. Yeah. Uh wait a while, you usually boot up in another yeah. mode and when the script kicks in to mount it as a file share, uh no mount it as a virtual drive. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so one of the downsides is that it's kind of slow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so typically you have to wait for the pilot to boot up. Anyway, that's that's the downside. Mm. But it's just one like time. Like just it, well, if, if it ever goes to sleep, then it would have to reboot. Yeah, some, sometimes like, the whole system goes to sleep, then you know, the pipe will shut down as well. If you, if you go to D drive, there's actually, I'm not sure, get some machine. Maybe the link is going to be detected. Oh, could it be eaten by plug on the mouse? Or PGA upgrade on this laptop. We may be open as one at this point. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> These are people. But they also went open slack and then you know. Usually that one is blinking the wood already. Oh my you've done it. But easy I can see it. Yeah, then I'm not sure the thumb drives like, appear here usually. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I don't know. It's not. It's not. I don't think it's that thing over here. But, uh, I think it's okay. You, you guys can kind of get the idea. Wait, you're in the VM or outside the VM? Is this or no? Oh, okay. Yeah, I only tested this on like uh, Windows 10 or so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think it's detected here, but um, so far I only use it on like a Windows 10 laptop. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I think I'm done. Same one, many more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, anyone has any questions? Oh, um, someone was suggesting that this uh, mass storage thing, you can change PID and DID uh, to match any brand of site. Mm, can, can it be done? Potentially, potentially. I, I've not dug too much into it because like, this is one of the modules, I think G mass storage. Yeah, uh, you drive this. Yeah, it's just a default driver in, I don't know, the Raspberry Pi ecosystem, yeah. So you thought we have interest in <laughs> emulating a certain brand and model. So, so if you want this to respond faster, usually if you like, put a battery inside so the Pi is already oh. powered up, right, and you plug it in, you'll probably like um, enumerate much quicker, right, and we're going through the whole boot-up process. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah. No questions? Okay. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thanks. Thanks.